Awaken to Hair Growth. Awaken to Hair Growth because there is possibility to get your hair back. Awaken to Hair Growth because we're not told that we're able to conquer and overcome alopecia. Awaken to Hair Growth because I want to be a positive light and beacon for you because I've healed my alopecia and now I help others do the same. With different types of alopecia, men, women, children of all ages, of all races and ethnicities. Hi, and welcome back to the Alopecia Angel podcast, Awaken to Hair Growth. Today, we're going to talk about genetics and alopecia. And many times I see out there in forums, I see out there in comments about people who mistakenly think that their genes, that their genetics are the only thing to blame, that their genetics have doomed them into this way of life and that their destiny and their current situation is because of their genes. And this is untrue. Now, it's not 100% untrue, but for the most part, it is untrue. And why do I say this? It's because research has shown that we can determine the quality of our life by our decisions, by our habits, by what we eat, by our environment, and so much more. There's research that has been done, it's called epigenetics, and they studied twins. And as you know, twin children or twin adults or any twin is the identical DNA, right? They have identical DNA. And so they followed these twins. Um, it was over 70 pairs of, gene- uh, of twins. They followed them from age seven to over 70 and saw that by the time that they were at a certain age, let's say 60s or 70s or 50, that these genes had nothing in common. For example, one was healthier than the other. One was more, um, you know, more prone to disease than the other. One was more this than that. One had alopecia and the other one didn't. One had cancer, the other one didn't. And why is this? If we have sets of twins, who are identical in DNA, and yet they're very different by the time they've reached, you know, adulthood. And it's because genes and the way they are expressed is really only, only and if up until 10 to 15% of the overall quality of life that you will have. The other 80, 90, 95% is diet and lifestyle. And diet and lifestyle are two big buckets of categories and umbrellas that have many and multiple subcategories. Diet is not one size fits all, as I mentioned back in like episode two, but at the same time, lifestyle is also a big umbrella with many, many, many subcategories underneath. And so this is also very, very important to consider because every child, even within your own household is very different not just personality wise, but then also how they're raised. You know, uh, my grandma always says uh, the way one, her first child was raised is a different situation, time in life uh, opportunity than let's say the last child. And it's a different generation potentially by that time, Um, you know, different technologies are available by the last child versus the first child. Maybe there's more money. Um, Maybe there was a recession, you know, everyone has these different imprints, so to speak. And this all comes apart and comes together in terms of your diet and lifestyle. And so it's very, very important to really identify this because to say and blame our genes or genetics, our parents, our, uh, you know, family tree is incorrect. It really is because we also need to take responsibility for our own path. Just because let's say something happened to us then we need to also take responsibility for that and do better. Once we know better, we do better. Just like Maya Angelou says, I love that quote by her. And in terms of genetics, you know, the whole thing, what makes it different is known as gene expression. DNA is an inactive molecule, but its expression into active molecules or proteins is influenced by all the factors that determine the difference between aging well or badly. And you can see this in between sisters and brothers or between uh, friends. Some are going to age wonderfully, others not so wonderfully. And it's all because of how we live day to day. 
the active side of genetics belongs to the field of epigenetics, which controls whether a gene is turned on or turned off. So we can in turn express with our habits, with our diet and our lifestyle, which genes turn on and turn off. You carry around at the epigenetic level, all the major experiences of your lifetime. As these accumulate, they automatically divide into experiences that promote a long health span and those that do the opposite, right? Our decision, whether that's with our fork or whether our other decisions that we make on a daily basis, all promote health or take it away. That's, that's really at, at the heart of it. For example, I know someone whose whole family is obese and yet he isn't. He chose diet and lifestyle and chose a better way of life. And obesity, you know, in, in the medical arena is seen as a medical condition. But at the same time, you can turn that off. You can turn off diabetes. You can turn off alopecia. You can turn off autoimmune diseases. You can turn off all these gene expressions by changing your daily habits, by changing your diet and your lifestyle, by changing what you think is healthy to learning something that truly is healthy. And I was actually with a friend yesterday and we were talking about health and he was telling me how he had lost over 20 friends and family over the past two years from COVID. And he was telling me, oh, I think they're healthy. And I was like, so how do you define health? Because the way you define health, I think is, you know, is the first aha moment that I had. For example, when I was diagnosed with alopecia, I thought I was healthy. I thought I was the poster child for health. In essence, I had a personal trainer. I was working out. I was super fit. And, you know, down the line, I had a bunch of other uh, wonderful boxes marked off, but I wasn't healthy because obviously I got alopecia and I didn't blame it on my genes. I didn't blame it on anyone really. I what I really did was to investigate why this was happening. And the conclusion was, is that I was unhealthy in other areas that I did not consider part of health. Health is also a big umbrella, just like diet and lifestyle. And to really go deep into it, you need to really investigate and understand what that really looks like and what that um, framework really is so that you can apply it to your life. And this is what I've done in my program. And this is, this was probably the biggest learning lesson of my life. Uh, one of them at least, because without understanding the foundations, without understanding that framework, then you're not able to promote health. You're not able to get the hair growth. You're not able to move past these obstacles. So you can change the trajectory of your life and the quality of your life. So here's where a breakthrough is possible that you could make an enormous difference. We know that you cannot change the genes you were born with. However, even though you cannot change the genes you were born with, you can change the expression, which is what matters. At the end of the day, you can suppress the gene for alopecia. You can suppress many of these diagnoses and diseases just by the way you live, just by the way you eat, just by the way diet and lifestyle come together in, in this perfect balanced marriage. Also, 90% of your genes are not in your cells, but they're in your gut. And trillions of bacteria in your, in your digestive tract do more than just digest food. They constitute an immense chemical factory, sending messages to every part of the body. Humans have evolved in cooperation with these bacteria. They are not alien or separate from us. They are a part of your evolution, affecting you at every moment. Chemical messages can be harmful, such as those that create inflammation or promote stress, or they can also be beneficial. This is all very unique to each and one of us. It's constantly shifting because we're constantly being exposed to things in our environment, to our foods, it, it changes every day. And so this is where a lot of our decision-making comes in. The genes you were born with, they only amount to 10%, 15% max of your total genome. The good news is that you can change the expression, that you can take more control of your health. The health span, hair growth, and health overall depends on living in such a way that diet and lifestyle are in harmony in sync 
and thus not allows for you to overcome alopecia, but all the other health symptoms or conditions you are also facing. With modifications and change, you can be the healthiest you ever. And that's truly what I strive for, not just in myself, but also with my clients. And it's radical what you're able to do. It's absolutely a huge shift and change on your living and your mindset. And it's a mind, body, spirit, holistic view of health because you can't ignore one area and only focus on the, another area. So for example, when it's, when it comes to hair growth, a lot of people like to focus on topical solutions. Um, for example, like shampoos and serums and, and oils and this type of thing, but that's not really targeting everything. That's not helping because it's not going to work. You can't just target one aspect of hair growth with just a topical or with just a lotion or a potion or a cream. It won't work. You have to really embody your whole being for you to be your healthiest, for you to be healthy, mind, body, spirit. And that's what that takes. It's really what it takes. Diet and lifestyle essentially has to be on point and not just for a day or two, but on a consistent basis because your health is made up of the days and months and years of your life. So let's say, for example, if you're diagnosed with something, in this case, alopecia, let's say like for me, it was in my thirties and you're like surprised and, and you're dismayed and you're crying and you're just, you know, um, frustrated. Well, looking back, hindsight shows me that I shouldn't have been surprised. I shouldn't have been, um, you know, just so shocked. I shouldn't have been shocked because now knowing what I do know now, I can see that there was a lot of things that needed tweaking. There was a lot of things that weren't optimal, that weren't healthy for me. And with those changes, things got better, but it's relearning and unlearning, right? Because no one's teaching us this. There's no teacher. Um, parents don't teach us health. Um, government schools, they don't teach us health. And so it's really unlearning to, uh, to relearn what true health looks like and what that really is, because it's a lot more in depth than what you would think it really is. But at the end of the day, the choice is yours. And this is a beautiful thing because you ultimately have the full 100% responsibility on what your genes look like, how they're expressed. And at the same time, it's your own it's your own responsibility. There, there's no one to blame. And at the same time, you have full control, which is a beautiful thing because you want control over your, over your health. You want control over your hair. And so again, genes are not the end all be all. We can overcome that. And diet and lifestyle does take work. Uncovering those blind spots, like I mentioned in episode three or four, also takes a little bit of work you need to be extremely self-aware or you need to have a consultation with me so I can help you uncover those blind spots because that's key. You see, if you don't uncover those blind spots, you can be making the same mistakes over and over again without realizing it. Or you could also be, um, you know, hindering your progress. It took me over three years and I know I could have I could have done this a lot sooner and I could have healed a lot sooner had I had seen those blind spots earlier but you know, it's part of the journey. So now I know. And at the same time with my clients, they get that aha moment. Once we do a consultation, once we go through the evaluation, and that's a huge part of it because you don't know what you're looking for. You just see hair loss, but there could be so many different root causes. And this is important to really identify, but without diet and lifestyle, without any of this, it won't work because it's foundational to your success. It really is. So where to go next? So first off, know that genetics play a very small portion of your over life, quality of life, of your overall health, of your overall everything. And yes, we can be predisposed to everything, but at the same time, if we're very mindful, if we understand what health looks like, if we take the steps and the action moving towards this, if we invest in our health, because health is just like your retirement fund. It really needs to be something in the forefront. I, I know so many people who they're always focused on their investments. They're always focused on stocks. They're always focused on 
you know, putting into their piggy bank and saving money because this is what will help them for their future. And this is very important as well. But what's the point of investing for your future? Let's say retirement or, uh, you know, your end of days will and scenarios if you don't have your health. And I think COVID has really brought that to the, to the forefront. I think this has really brought that to light that we're probably not as healthy as we think we are as a society, as a population. And we really need to do more for ourselves. We really need to get out of our comfort zones, not be so lazy and really take our health into consideration because without health, then you really don't have anything. And learning this the hard way, I can say this, and it was very difficult because you think you know, and you have a good grasp on your health, and then yet you have blind spots. And it, it was very frustrating to go from doctor to doctor without any clue, without any help, without any forward motion, and only being served prescriptions and creams and potions that wouldn't work or injections. And so I invite you to learn more. I invite you to continue to follow me on this podcast. And then also to learn more with our hair and heel program. I have a free training going on coming up soon. I invite you to register for that. So you can learn more. It's a free training called the four steps to healing alopecia and reversing it. And this will be a huge eye opener for you because it's not so obvious. If it was so obvious and we could just Google our results, then we would have, and you would have hair, but that's not it. Google's not necessarily your friend. There's a lot of misinformation there. And with alopecia, there's a lot of controversy and a lot of misinformation as well. And this is probably why it takes everyone forever and a day to heal. And this is probably why it took me also very long to heal, but you can heal. And so put aside the genetics, take control of your health and move forward. Join me on the free training. I look forward to speaking to you next time on our next episode. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Alopecia Angel podcast, a positive light in healing alopecia. You can do this and we can help. Spread the word that reversing alopecia is possible by telling your friends and family.